So, do you have an answer for me? <laughs> We're just week? going right We're to it. We're just going to jump right into okay. it. Okay. Hey, guys. If you listened last week, there was a trivia question given to me, the scholar, and um, I couldn't figure it out within the episode, and then even for a week, I have no clue. I So, the, the voice I thought more about, and if it's not a horror movie then there's yeah there's okay. it could be anything but so, as far as the phrase i'll do it one more time okay come on kill me i'm right here <laughs> so who do you think the voice belongs to the voice the the only person that sticks out and it was just the infliction of your tone was jennifer love hewitt but again you said not a horror movie yeah. so i was like that can't be it you know Kind of close, yeah. Honestly, because okay. they were both on a TV show together. Ah, so oh. it's, does that give mm. you a clue? Well, think I about mean, it for a second. Well, I'm thinking Nev Campbell now. Well, they were on the same show as well. Yes, all three of them. The, oh, there's three. Oh, okay. So, so the girl that I'm you're talking about doing. the Mean Girl. Yeah. Okay. See, that was gonna be my next guess. Was well, a that mean should girl. have been your first guess. So, well, her voice is lighter. That's <laughs> I mean, I'm a man. I, can't. I know, but still, that's why I was like, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of her. So it was, yeah, we should all totally just stab Caesar. <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. Okay. Um, the line is from Predator. Oh. Come on, kill me, I'm right here. Come on, kill me. I never would have guessed that. So I just thought of this off the top of my head. That was fun. But no, it was I, like too freaking hard. If I, if look, good try. I have a feeling you'll come out with more. Bring it on. Okay. That yeah, that one was a little far fetched, but it's 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 good. It's good. Predator is a good movie too. I like that mm-hmm. one. So well, oh well. Um, welcome back, yeah, everyone. Uh, Sunday was the start of Shark Week, yeah. and I'm sure every other horror podcast out there is doing the same thing we're doing. They are, which for some reason I thought they weren't. I don't know why I thought, but it's Shark Week. This has been going on for years. Yeah. People, and then, you know, like, girls refer to it as Shark Week when they're on their period sometimes. Never heard Never of Never heard this. of that? No. Yeah. You know, because of all the blood. So... I don't know why I thought, oh, this is this is us and nobody else is going to do this. We're so original. We've cornered the market. <laughs> Fuck it. We're just going to talk about sharks and it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, there's there's some, there's, you know, been shark movies since the beginning of time and all. Beginning di- of our time. Yeah. All different types, comedy, horror, whatever. Um, so, I mean, there's obviously enough content that we can talk yeah. about. But uh, before we get into that, just Mm -hmm. a couple of announcements. Uh, I want you, Nate, to tell me about your venture over the weekend to the Poly Center. (laughs) That's a lie. It's a total lie. I didn't go inside. Oh, you didn't go inside? No, I didn't go in there. Oh, you just saw that. I just, I work very close by. Okay. And I was like, oh, look at all that. American Horror Story. That they're featuring, cool. So you can see some of it from outside. They do have some of the wardrobe worn by the actors. Yeah. Um, but I didn't go inside. Okay. I thought you went in there. I was Sorry, like, oh, false I advertisement. Love to... <laughs> but yeah. still pretty cool, though. I mean, I would have If you guys gone. find yourself in Beverly Hills, go to the Paley Center for Media. And right now they're doing... What, what was the phrase they said? Um, style of scare or something style of fear Mm -hmm. um they're exhibiting all of a bunch of the costume pieces from the last six seasons of american horror story so you can go check it out and um let us know how it goes because i didn't go inside i just (laughs) i just saw the picture i was like okay now i have to go to work uh, were you going to tell me something? I was. Okay, well, you so, tell me your exciting okay. business because I have no business well, at all. <laughs> well, it's not as exciting. So, um, yours truly has a birthday coming up. It's this Thursday. Uh, so, I guess when this posts, it'll be the next day. So, uh, yeah, happy birthday to me. And for a gift to myself, I decided to, um, buy tickets for the Midsummer's uh, convention, horror convention that's in Long Beach this weekend. Oh, 
Oh, fun. Yes. So I am going to go. It's this uh, Saturday and Sunday, July 20, wait, 29th and 30th. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's a convention. It's all on horror, bunch of panels and attractions and people that are going to be there. But the highlight of it all, this is pretty much like 90% of why I paid all this money to go, is that they have a specific panel for Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, cool. So I'm hope. well, obviously the creators are going to be there, but I'm hoping to see like some ton- tons of cast members. Hopefully they'll go. And if anything, I'm sure the people who are making this sort of fan-made movie of, of right. based on the show will be there to talk about it too, whether they have a booth or they're a part of the panel. But I cannot wait to hear what everyone has to say or just to see other fans out there that love the show yeah and uh yeah so i'm really excited to go this is actually my first horror convention that i've been to and i'm sure it won't be the last but it's gonna be fun so um, i'm gonna go to that both days this weekend so keep a lookout for um some pics and tweets and stuff um obviously i'll be posting pictures and stories on instagram at fear bias so follow that i'll be doing that this weekend and aren't you also doing something else for your birthday? Well, yeah. I mean, it's not horror related, but doesn't um, matter. Talk about it. So on my actual birthday, there it's actually the day they're going to start this um, sort of traveling tour of one of my favorite movies mm-hmm. of all time. Uh, it's Labyrinth. Yay! Yay! So the thing with this is that um, they've decided to make it a quote along. <laughs> musical so you know obviously there's tons of sing-along uh, stuff out there they'll just you know show movies and just put the captions up for people to sing well they actually want you to quote this movie not from beginning to end but there's obviously some very iconic sayings and things that go on in there and um this looks like a lot of fun i just po- posted a sort of the trailer to the yeah. event and it looks amazing and for it to actually start in L.A. before traveling around the world on my day, it was kismet. I had to go. Yeah. So that's going to be on the actual uh, day of my birthday, so I'm so excited for that. And, yeah, I can't wait. Well, I'm excited for you. Thank you. And Thank you. when she's falling down the hole with the hands, I need you to quote as loud as you can. She chose down. <laughs> she chose down. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now. Huh. Was that wrong? <laughs> Dumbass. I know. Yes. That's very exciting. Any horror fan can appreciate Labyrinth. That's what we all basically, you know, cut our teeth on. Oh, yeah. So, on to shark movies. Mm-hmm. What do you think is the fascination with shark movies in general? Why do people like them? I guess it's an easy thing to be afraid of and i think even more so than sharks the ocean is terrifying because i will agree with that it's so big and it's so deep and they always say that there's just a lot of the ocean floor that's really not explored they've gone into the what is it the mariana trench which is the deepest part of the ocean and they've gone in there and they've looked around for things i think James Cameron did some sort of documentary one time. But there's still a lot that is unexplored. There's still a lot of things we don't know. There's still um, discovering new species of aquatic life all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the scariest part. You can't really see what's in the water (laughs) unless you're in Hawaii or Fiji and the water's like fucking just clear as day. And that's like very rare. If you go to the beach in L.A., don't do it, guys. It's Please. Dirty. Gross. You're going to grow a third eye. So you might not see a shark coming up to bite you in the ass. Um, and they're not all giant like the ones in Jaws. Some of them are smaller, and they're just going to like clamp onto your thigh, and you'll never see it coming. <laughs> That's the scary part. And I think something that people fear most about sharks is that they don't understand them. They do have these movies that have sort of demonized them and made them out to be like these evil creatures. They're just sharks. They're just doing what they do. Carnivores. Yeah. They just eat meat. They eat. 
And yeah, if you cross paths with a shark, they might eat you. So just be careful. But they're not evil. They're just doing their thing. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's very scary to consider a giant 20-foot great white shark swimming after you. Because <laughs> that would really suck. That would be very awful. Uh, I can't even fathom the thought of being in the same body of water mm-mm, with the shark. Mm-mm. I don't care how big. I, I just can't do it. Some people do it for fun. They like yeah. go snorkeling and do those cage dives and all. Like yeah. I just don't understand the thrill of that. Like I get it. I mean, we watch horror movies. We want to be scared. But I mean, from a third person's point of view, I don't want to be put in the middle of it. Yeah. Literally surrounded by sharks because they look cool. Like it's just not my thing. Can't do it. Can't do it. I don't. I, I've seen people swim with smaller sharks. Like maybe they're three feet long or maybe even bigger than that but they're not the ones that can like open their mouths and bite you there's i don't know what species they're called they have a specific name but you know maybe those i could swim with because they're yeah. not really gonna eat me they're looking for like really tiny fish yeah <sighs> well it's surprising that um there there's been as many shark movies as there are because of the fact that all you have to do is don't get in the water, movie over. So it's like these movies just still well, keep coming out, and then it's like... But recently they've changed well, that. You, well, that's the thing. It's like they've obviously gotten <laughs> really creative because people still want to make movies that involve sharks. Yeah. And um, it's just the fascination about sharks versus you know other animals. I mean... I, I've seen a couple of movies where it involved it like a lion or you know a tiger, or maybe even like alligators or things like that. But sharks seem to be just this target that people really want to you know capture and and make movies about. People kind of compare sharks to Michael Myers, how he's sort of just like devoid of emotion. There's nothing behind the eyes, and when you look at a shark's eyes, it looks like there's really nothing there. Because <laughs> um, I mean, if you look at a crocodile eye, it's kind of like they got. They got a little something in there. It's like there's yellow and there's a... I'm just saying. It's like, you know, <laughs> sharks, it's just a big black eye and they they don't think about you. They're just hungry. Yeah. Um, which makes some of these movies kind of ridiculous. Do you do you like shark movies? Um, They're fine. I like some better than others, but I'm not going to just watch a shark movie. Just for the sh- sake of it, yeah. No, because most of them are... You know, they're they're ridiculous. They're they're comedies. Or at least I think that most people by now have to be aware of these movies when they make them that they're gonna be funny. Yeah. No one's gonna be scared of two headed shark attack. I just don't <laughs> I don't see that being, you know, terrifying to most people. So there's only a handful of them that are really scary, and it's probably the ones that are more um, rooted in reality. Mm -hmm. No, okay. I see what you're saying. So before we get into sort of, I guess, some of the popular shark movies that are out there, um, how would you prefer to have like a shark movie be like you, you mentioned like sort of towards reality. So you want to be a little bit more realistic on the attack or the reason why all of this is like involved with the shark like is yeah. it the setting and yeah okay like how are you bringing a shark into the story yeah for it to make sense some of them do go to great lengths to make the sharks more intelligent or <laughs> make them bigger but if you can do it in a believable way and i can sort of suspend disbelief that's fine but I probably do prefer people to just kind of come into a shark's environment versus the shark is going out of its way to hunt specific people down. It's just, it's a little too much for me. Well, the reason why I ask is because I, you know, you watch these movies and you're just like, how else are they really supposed to make this a believable story? So when you go to these movies, it's, it's like, you have to kind of take away the possibility of like not necessarily reality, but just a believable reason of why these people are are being attacked by sharks. And so, I guess 
if if these movies are are you know pressured to be like not necessarily spoofs but like can you really make a shark movie nowadays and still have it be like this could happen and this is a really good horror story and all that stuff or are we supposed to really look at them as just comedic or just something pure entertainment to watch and um yeah so i just wonder you know in the future like okay for instance so the Jason Statham movie that's going to come out pretty soon. <laughs> so what do you think about that type of concept? Uh, do you think that it's a believable story? So we're talking about Meg, which has pretty much been in development hell since the early 2000s. It's based on a book by Steve Alton, and I think he made a whole series based on the idea that Meg... And I'm not even going to try to say the actual name of the shark. It's like Meg- Megalodon or something like that. Okay. Um, it's The series is based on this shark coming out of the depths of the ocean and basically just being 60 feet long and just eating things and wreaking havoc. And I think the books are definitely written to be movies. <laughs> they are very like popcorn fun. And I don't think he even roots it too much in science. There's not like a whole lot of um, factual evidence that the shark is based on. It's just a good time. But I think it'll still be entertaining to watch. I think a big shark, and this is probably how my mind just goes, like big spiders, those scare me. Um, Big sharks, that scares me. Like a whole 60-foot shark. Yeah, that that's ridiculous. Um, Jason Statham, that's yeah. the part that makes me laugh. Really? Why? Because he talks like this. Well, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. And so here's, here's the thing. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, is he going to punch the shark in the face? <laughs> no. Um, so, okay. So the so I'm on IMDb right now. It, the plot basically says, uh, after escaping an attack by what he claims was a 70-foot shark, Oh, they added 10 feet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, his character, I'm, I'm assuming, Jonas Taylor, mm-hmm. must uh, confront his fears to save those trapped in a sunken submersible. That's all I've, that's all I've got. Um, the cast is actually pretty cool. Uh, Ruby Rose, who is sort of coming up. Right. And I've seen her in quite a bit of projects these last mm-hmm. couple of months. She's doing a lot. Uh, and then there's Rain Wilson. Uh, let's see. Cliff Curtis, who uh, is on Fear of the Walking Dead right now. Hmm. Oh, wait. Yeah. He's, he's Australian. The dad. He's the dad. Yeah. yeah. I think he's Australian. Yeah. And um, maybe Masias- he's from New Zealand. Oops. Masiaka, uh, who is Hiro on uh-huh. the, the show Heroes. Yeah. So, I mean, it it has a really good cast. It looks like they're putting some money behind this. Um, obviously, I haven't seen a trailer or footage or anything, but I, it's, I think it's, they just, just started. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it's, it's told to be a really good movie, and we haven't really seen mm-hmm. a big. Well, I mean, there's been some theatrical releases of shark movies lately, but I mean, this one actually kind of comes with a little bit mm-hmm. of like, okay, this one could actually be really good. And I think that's another thing that draws people to shark movies. It's more of a monster movie. It's not a shark. They're okay. monsters. Okay. And I think in the last decade or so, people have sort of stepped back from the monster aspect and they've made it scary just by them being sharks. They're just sharks. It's not this crazy demon shark that you can't see, and then suddenly he's there, and, and they're they're real sharks. Yeah. So this one is going back to being a monster movie. It's a giant ass shark, and Jason Statham is gonna sucker punch it in the gut, and he's gonna kick it, and it's gonna be crazy. He's actually more entertaining than the way you mimicked him just now. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm but, sure he is. What does it matter what I think? Everybody loves him. He's very he's, popular. I think he's funny. I just wasn't expecting him to be a sharkologist, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Hey, if Will Smith can punch an alien in the face, I think it's okay if that was twenty years ago. Takes on a shark. <laughs> I don't want him to punch the shark. <laughs> I really don't. So, um, which one should we talk about first? Um, is there any ones that you like or dislike? We can talk about what well, we hate or do the game. Oh, you want to do the game? Let's first. do it. Yeah. Okay. So I, um, 
Otherwise, I'm going to talk about all the titles and it's probably be like, okay. Mm. So I came up with this idea to test uh, the full on um, some uh, shark movies and their titles. Basically especially on sci-fi they've come out <laughs> with so many different types of ways that they can make a shark movie it's insane and these titles that have been uh coming up it, it it's it's so crazy how they managed to make them so i'm gonna give nate some titles and he's gonna tell me if um, it isn't <laughs> titled to an actual shark movie that's been out or if it's completely <laughs> been, been made up so some of these might be a little easy. It just depends on your knowledge. So let's go. All right, here's the first one. Uh, shark a lot. God, I can't even say Shark Apocalypse. Is there a movie called Shark Apocalypse? I don't think so. True or false? Shark Apocalypse. False. It is false. That okay. is not a shark movie. <laughs> I was like, no, that doesn't sound like one I've ever come across. <laughs> okay, um, here's another title. Jersey Shore Shark Attack. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, I hope you made it up. Well, obviously, it could be because of the whole, you know, obviously MTV had a yeah, Jersey Shore. I know. So, so why not put them in? But it's like the fact that Jersey Shore isn't really a thing anymore. I'm just going to say true. I'm going to say true. It sounds ridiculous enough that it might be real. Jersey Shore Shark Attack is true. <laughs> this movie came out in 2012. Yeah. Had to capitalize on that real quick. I've never heard of this, but once you said it, I was like, it, it has to be real. It's okay. so stupid. All right, here's another one. Ghost Shark. True. True. Yeah. Yes, it is a sci-fi movie about the spirit of a shark <laughs> that comes back um, to life for revenge. Oh I don't God. know, but this was in um, this was in 2013. Now, I've heard the title, so you I heard knew the it title? immediately, but I didn't really know what it is about. But yeah. it's exactly what you think. They don't try to like hide the... It's not some sort of art a, film. Look, we, we there are people out there who believe animals, plants, things, but all have souls. I'm if a shark saying. dies and wants to come back, it's going to come back. Oh, gosh. <laughs> all right. So here's another one. Um, sand sharks. That's true. That is definitely true. Do you? This was in uh, 2011. And do you know who starred in that movie? No, I don't remember. Brooke Hogan. Hulk oh, Hogan's daughter. Good for her. I know. <laughs> yeah, she actually, so she, yeah, she tried to do, you know, a music she tried career to and do everything. A lot. Yeah, she tried to do, I mean, and they had their reality show too, so mm. it made sense to cast her back then all right all right all right here's another title shark versus mega tarantula no i don't think that's a real one that's false that is made up okay yeah because i'm like there's like a shark versus like 10 different things but i was like <laughs> no there's no all right how about this one mega shark versus mega alligator oh well that's tricky Hmm. I'll say true. Mega shark versus mega alligator. That is false. Okay. <laughs> There's another one. It's like something versus crocosaurus. Yeah. But. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Jurassic shark. It is a mix between Jurassic Park and obviously shark yeah. movies. False. That is actually true. Really? Came out in 2012. See, there is such a vast library of these movies. Yes, there is a really big library. <laughs> and um, I don't know if this movie specifically was a spoof, but they made a point to have it to be, like, have Jurassic it be Park. like Jurassic Park and, you know, just a mixture of sharks. So. Wow. All right. Um, I'm going to give you two more. <laughs> um, well, oh, no. I have to. No, maybe three this time. Oh, God. <laughs> um, a spider shark. False. <laughs> if it's this not look false, you gave me. I will slit my wrist right now. <laughs> that is false. Oh my god, yes. that is just too far. We've gone too far. <laughs> okay, and Bahamas shark attack. Um, true. That is 
false. Okay. It is a little bit of a I don't know. It just point. sounded like there was so much put into that title. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit of a trick question. There is an actual title. Isn't called, there like a shark attack series? It's Malibu shark oh. attack uh, okay wait yeah <laughs> but yeah i just fuck you it. rob i just <laughs> <laughs> but um, there is a series called shark attack right it's like shark attack 2 and shark... i think so yeah so that's why i was like oh it's like oh bahamas shark yeah. attack okay i'm gonna give you one more abominable shark mm, false that is false yeah. Yes, but like, there was a title I saw called Snow Shark. Yeah, I was like, there is Snow and Sharks. Yes. I'm like really curious about that one because if it's cold outside, I'm not even going outside, let alone near an ocean. So there's another one called like, or maybe it's called Ice Spiders or something, Snow Spiders. But yeah, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how these things happen, but somebody's very creative. It's yes. just that you know the execution and the production value. They are like. Nobody's gonna watch it anyway. You did pretty good. That was good. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, you I know. tried my best to make up some titles. It was actually hard because some of these titles were just too ridiculous. I couldn't even. I, I just, I don't know. I'm almost speechless. But <laughs> that would be amazing if I was ever speechless. Moving right along. So, what's your favorite shark movie, Rob? Okay. So, um, my favorite is actually Deep Blue Sea. Yes, you knew I was going to say this. <laughs> kind of. Um, so here's the thing with Deep Blue Sea versus like Jaws or something. And the only reason why I'm comparing the two is because this is a lot of people's favorite mm-hmm. shark movie or movie involving a shark. They're probably the two biggest titles. Yeah, and for me, Deep Blue Sea, I grew up with. Yeah. And that's not necessarily an excuse because I've seen older titles of movies that have come out before my time. The thing is, is that Jaws was not played in my home. It just wasn't. It wasn't a movie that was popular amongst my family members, and it's not a movie I looked at and was like, oh, I must watch it. Right. Deep Blue Sea, when that movie came out, I knew half the stars, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was theatrical release. I went and saw it. The attacks were on point. And just versus the two, I just there was just a lot more entertainment involved with Deep Blue Sea. And yeah. um, I know a lot of people, you know, their heart goes to Jaws, but Deep Blue mm-hmm. Sea is my favorite. It, it's it's fun, and it's believable, and, well, believable to the sense of the situation that they yeah. were in. You know, I mean, they're underwater, they're in this underground sort of lair, and, you know, they have no choice but to deal with the sharks at hand. It's not like they can just not go to the beach and not get attacked. Like, True. they not only have to deal with these sharks, but they have to deal with the fact that there is water coming in from every side of their station, ready to drown their asses unless they figure out a way to get out. And just trying to swim to the top on just a bathing suit alone is <laughs> is impossible anyway. So it's just... That, to me, created more suspense and more of, I guess, a I, just a sense of, like, are they going to make it or not, you know? So that is, my, that is my favorite. So when I was a kid, and this is, like, I was still, like, um, taking baths. I hadn't, like, graduated showers yet. I was still a little. <laughs> but I remember being in the bathtub thinking, it would be so cool. If they made a movie about sharks that were inside a building and people were trapped and the sharks were smart and they were kind of robotic, that check would out be that. Amazing. Look at that imagination. And then, like two years later, that fucking movie. Maybe it was even a year later that it came out, and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? That's my <laughs> idea." I'm sure ten thousand other people are like, "I know." Right? I thought the same thing, but yeah. I couldn't believe it. It's like I wasn't gonna do that when I was an adult. So I really liked Deep Blue Sea too. Yeah, um, that was. A surprising film. It was like Jaws is sort of like the grandfather, you know, established the shark lineage and it's the classic that we all hearken to. And, you know, Deep Blue Sea is its badass grandson and he's a lot of popcorn fun. Yeah, and, <laughs> I mean, and it that's was, a good way to put it popcorn yeah. fun. Yeah, it was just because, a- I mean, yeah, it's such a big, crazy situation. It's like, why would you even put yourself in that situation with some smart sharks? You're so stupid. <laughs> but, you know, it was it was scary. 
Um, those sh- and the sharks, the design of the sharks were very strange because like their teeth were just like yeah, pointing in did all have different. Some... I don't know why they did that. If that was part of the mutation that they were going through or what, but the sharks were scary. Um, and they were a little bigger. That's I remember that was part of the the deal. It's like they were ten feet longer than Jaws or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then you know. Good old Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, um, we really. I really thought like he was going to be the one to lead them to victory. And well, it, it's surprising <laughs> too because I mean he he's obviously the the most successful yeah, he was actor the, of the, the big movie. name. And um, but it didn't really star him. That's the other thing about it, is that yeah. he still kind of played the supporting to the crew that was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know obviously Thomas Jane, yeah. aka the Punisher, was more of the lead in this movie. And Saffron Burroughs. Yeah. Uh, so having him kind of come in and, and just kind of help out, I guess it would have made sense why, what happened, what happened. But like, yeah, I, I was pretty surprised by that. So um, in case we have some listeners who have not seen Deep Blue Sea, just because it's too dated for you, um, there were these group of scientists who were using sharks in their experiments to try and cure Alzheimer's disease. Mm-hmm. And because they specialize in in sharks or, you know, water biology. I don't know. I don't remember. But for some reason, they just wanted to use sharks. They didn't want to use apes or, you know. They, like, picked sharks for for something. Like, their brains, they enlarged them, and it was, like, it was something. I don't know if it was easier to just, but. Oh, maybe it was, like. This sounds stupid. But so you know how you eat salmon for omega-3s and it's good for your brain. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, I will go with that. But <laughs> I this, think that's part of it. But that's the other thing, too, is that like, I, I was trying to remember back, and I don't know if they really explain why sharks were used versus any other animal that they could have used. I don't remember at all. But um, in the process of working on their brains and making them bigger, it obviously made them more intelligent. So when you've got an animal that obviously is more deadlier than human, the, you know, that's, it's not really a good idea to make them smarter than you either Mm -hmm. or smarter than who, you know, what they're used to. Cause they were doing some really like smart shit in, in that, in that movie, especially with when they grabbed the, the guy who was being taken out of the gurney. So when like his arm got bit off and then they took him out, so they grabbed him and then he, they rushed over and used him as like a battering ram mm-hmm. to like break the glass into the facility. I mean, he just charged at it and just like let go, and that thing just went. Fly. Poor man, that was brutal. Oh my god, that was yeah. But um, yeah. no, I thought this movie was a lot of fun. It it the, the danger was real. The people we cared about, mm-hmm. Michael Rappaport. I was a real big oh. fan of him, like way back when. Yeah. Still am, but I mean like. He he was he was really cool back in the day. So like I really enjoyed why and he was like sort of the comic relief of the movie too. He was pretty funny. Yeah, and he was the I don't know the logical one, but he was just like no, I'm not going in there. There's sharks in there. <laughs> I mean he he wasn't having it. But um, obviously the big shock of Deep Blue Sea was that surprise death of Samuel mm-hmm. Jackson. I don't think anybody saw that coming. I mean I think a lot of people say they saw it coming, but I was like, well I was a kid. I didn't see it coming, okay? Surprised me. <laughs> so, um, throughout the week, we've been posting about some of the movies we're going to talk about today, and we actually got a few comments. I just want to read some about uh, Deep Blue Sea. Um, ML Jen uh, <laughs> mentioned on Instagram, At the time, I thought that this movie was awesome. For the sake of 90s nostalgia, he'd give it about 70% as he was rating the title. Um he says, I have a feeling uh, this could easily have been the prequel to Snakes on a Plane <laughs> since, it, <laughs> since, it wants, um, since it has Samuel Jackson versus you know some sort of wildlife. Also, I would say LL Cool J made this movie with his comedic timing like Will Smith did in Independence Day, which I agree. Um, LL Cool J was funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, um, he did give a bunch of laughs. I mean, him talking to that parrot the whole time was... You ate my bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, bird. get your feathery ass down here, bird. Yeah. But, yeah, he, he was funny. Mm-hmm. And um, um, don't forget 
um, Matt's other comment. Oh yeah, he also mentioned <laughs> he was like, "Don't forget that track at the end that L. Cool J laid down for the ending credits. <laughs> the deepest blue. My head is like a shark's fan. <laughs> I totally forgot he made that song. I don't think I'll ever forget that. I'll be like, I'll be in mid dementia when I'm ninety, but I'll still remember that song. <laughs> but um, there are some people who actually did think this was a pretty scary movie. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of friends on uh, Facebook who who uh, posted about this. And one said, my friend Brianne, she goes, uh, the movie kept me on the edge of my seat because you never knew when one of those sharks was going to come out at you. And obviously the Samuel scene was awesome and totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. Um, Another friend, uh, my friend Kenyon, he says, uh, this movie is where the doctor is, oh yeah, the doctors are growing like uh, size sharks (laughs) and harness brain tissue. He says, um, saw it a long time ago. He said it wasn't as scary as Jaws, Mm -hmm. but definitely a constant adrenaline rush. And I think that's a real big difference between that movie versus others is that it was a big adrenaline rush. I mean, they really didn't give you much time to breathe. I mean, there was always something going on. Um, one of my favorite scenes actually was, it, it was funny. It was like they were going from like room to room and they had to kind of solve the puzzle of how they were going to get out of it. And that big giant tunnel, like vertical tube oh, yeah. that they had to climb up and the water was like slowly yeah. rising. But up top there was like a whole bunch of like burnt stuff kind of mm-hmm. coming down from the fire and they had to kind of go up and they went up that ladder and then the ladder came off the hinges and they all kind of just kind of, mm-hmm. that was kind of terrifying. And then poor girl got ate in the vagina. I just, <laughs> <laughs> ate in the well, yeah, vagina. Cause she's, no, cause she's, <laughs> Because she's, like, in the water. So when the ladder comes down, <laughs> the ladder comes down, I'm and then the, it all falls. And then she falls in the water, and they're trying to reach after her, but I she know. gets sucked in. And you don't really know what happens to her, so she pops out of the water. And literally in between her legs, that shark no, is, like, dead her on her. legs were in the shark's leg. No, one of the legs was out. I say It looks like she got bit in the JJ. so, yeah. Anyways. But that was that was pretty horrifying. Gross. But, I mean, that was one of those scenes where it was just constant adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, so that's why I really like that movie. Yeah. It was a good one. I recently, not recently, but I just thought of this TV movie. I have no idea what it was called. And I think, oh, God, I feel like it was Zach from Saved by the Bell. But it was him and three other people. Might not have even been him. But four of them are on this life raft in the middle of the ocean. They're stranded, and they're, like, you know, getting sunburned. They're exposed. They have no water. They're running out. One of the guys drinks salt water, and he starts to, like, hallucinate. Yeah. Um, and in the middle of the night, they all wake up, and he's, like, in the water. And he's like, no, it's fine, guys. Come on. And he's just in the water, and all of a sudden, he, like, you see, like, he starts jerking around because a shark gets him. And he's like, ah, and the shark like brings him towards the boat. And then, you know, <laughs> I don't remember this. It wasn't even like a shark movie, I don't think. It was a TV movie. I can't even tell you more about it than that. But okay. I just remember I was like, oop, don't drink salt water. <laughs> Duly noted. No, I've never heard it. But I'll have to look that up mm-hmm. and see if that was actually him. Um, so, yeah, Deep Blue Sea, good movie. <clears throat> um, what other title do you like or remember watching? Well, Everyone really hated The Shallows last year, I think, but I liked it. it. Scared me. Shit. So, The Shallows. This one is Blake Lively. Yeah. And she's a surfer yeah. who um, decides to go to the specific beach in Mexico, I think she was in, yeah. where her mother served or where they visited. I can't remember. There was some significant I mean, reason. Her mother had just passing. passed away and yeah. she used to surf there. And I think. She even found out she was pregnant with her there. Okay. So I think I think that was part of it. And so she wanted to reconnect with her mother. Um, it was scary. It was scary enough for me. I mean... So I missed my opportunity to see this in theaters. Oh, okay. um, I did not go to the theaters to watch it. 
And the biggest reason why is because I didn't think they would have much to do if it was just her out there trying to survive. So, you know, it's just one of those things that I'm kind of tired of seeing in in movies where they just concentrate on one specific individual and they're just constantly talking to themselves or whatever. It's to me that's just not as entertaining. However, I did decide to watch it for mm-hmm. the specifics of our episode and I wanted to talk to you about it. And this movie was good. Yeah. I thought it was really good and I'm actually surprised that the movie is not getting more love than mm-hmm. it is. Um, it was believable, her situation. Yeah. And the attacks were really, like, suspenseful. Like, yeah. I, <clears throat> aside from the sharks, this woman was getting hurt. Yeah. Like, every time she stepped on, was that coral or something she kept stepping yeah, on or like getting, she, it like... Was like, <sighs> like I was like, fire. Yeah, every time she tried to avoid mm-hmm. an attack, she would fall in the water, hit her head on a... Okay, so the first initial sort of um, attack to her um, when she fell off the surfboard. Mm -hmm. They, like, show her getting, like, you know, like, Mm -hmm. pushed in the water, like, Death Becomes Her style. This woman was, Mm -hmm. like, falling and hitting, like, every part of her body. Like, at one point, it looked like her neck had snapped. Mm -hmm. But she, like, hit her neck, her shoulder, and you could hear every bone that hit. Like, she got hurt out there. And then, you know, initially she got, you know, her leg bit. She had to take care of herself. Yeah. I love the fact that they gave her her own Wilson with oh. that seagull. <laughs> I mean, I really thought of that parrot from Deep Blue. So I was like, oh, fuck, the, the parrot's going to... Or not the parrot, but the seagull's going to get eaten. And she's going to be really sad. Yeah, but um, they they did put in a lot more reasons to have more action in it mm-hmm. and, and more of a way of making her time on that rock believable. Those two guys she was chatting with came back. So sad. And, um, you know, the drunk guy who was on the beach and and her just trying to figure out a way to evade the shark. She started timing, like, his, you know, mm-hmm. swim patterns and everything. And, and the GoPro thing I thought was very smart mm-hmm. for her to do. And thank God that kid knew well enough yeah. to go get help even though he probably didn't understand what was being said on the video. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was really smart. But those attacks were really suspended. Mm-hmm. I, I was into it. And I'm even watching it at home, I was surprised that I got into it as much as I did. Yeah. So, and know, I forgot about the, for um, the GoPro, because mm-hmm. that's how the movie starts. Yes, exactly. And I, I definitely didn't know that the GoPro doesn't give you... Like, it doesn't tell you how the movie is going to go. Well, you can hear that, obviously, what's on there. It's an mm-hmm. attack of some sort, but they don't show but you who or anything. I thought, oh, that's not going to go well. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I appreciated the the way that they um they told the story. Yeah. And that final attack scene. That was scary. I was like, God. are you kidding me? That was some insane I mean, she really had to think. She yeah. She really had to think. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I, it was so good, and just and just the way that the shark kind of in, like mm-hmm. she got a few stabs in, but just that whole fake out and how that shark just lunged at mm-hmm. that, and then and they showed it. They showed the shark actually go into, and that looked brutal. Uh, oh, it was so good. Yeah. I actually rewatched that scene so I mean, many times. Damn. Yeah, that that was really scary. That image of her like going down, and it's like right behind her, and it's. Opening its mouth. Yeah, it's just ready to, yeah. So, you know what? Um, Rotten Tomatoes, whoever gave this a bad grade, you know, (laughs) look, to each their own. And if it's not your type of movie, but based on some of the other stuff that's been coming out, The Shallows delivered. Yeah. I I actually recommend this movie Mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it. Don't let the one woman show fool you. They actually give you a lot to watch. And you, you actually care about this woman, too. You don't want her to die. And I, I think it's worth a watch if yeah. you haven't seen it. And there's a very popular Sia song at the end. <laughs> oh, that was Sia. Yeah, no, Sia. Oh, okay. I actually did like that song, <laughs> I, but, I didn't, but I didn't look at who it was, so. Yeah, I liked it. Um, what was the other one? Oh, Open Water. Ah, uh, um, okay. So with Open Water, I don't have too much memory of this. The only thing that I will say is that um, I commend it for its unique storytelling. Mm-hmm. Put it that way. Well, I think the one that one sticks out in my mind because it's based on events that happened. 
Yeah, so and this was a true story. We'll never something. actually know what happened to this couple, but they were in shark-infested waters. That's all that they know. Um, so you can kind of imagine what probably happened to them. And the way that they unfold the story, it's terrible. And um, I don't know, it was scary enough. And these are not shark. These were not great white sharks. These were not big sharks. These were sharks that you might not be afraid of. But, uh, you know, it's like when you're stuck in the middle of this swarm of, um, I don't even know what to call them. It was scary enough. And I, I, I think it was more so just the, the true, the true uh, event behind it. Yeah, this movie um, was different for me because, I mean, it was a couple trying to, I guess, rekindle their marriage. Mm. They may have had, like, some marital problems or whatnot. And, you know, being alone out there with pretty much nothing to do but to chat amongst themselves, I mean, they decided to use that time and, like, talk about their marriage and what the problem was going forward I, I i don't know if they reached sort of a resolution or if they sort of was just like i love you anyway or just kind of let go of stuff but i feel like they didn't yeah i really feel like they didn't which it's it's terrible i know it, it's kind of terrible but it's also good that they didn't give it this quote-unquote hollywood ending because they get eaten um oh, but so sad. you know i don't think they did i think that they Fought. I mean, I think, yes, once, like, I think he got bit first. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, of course, they were, like, clinging to each other, and they were crying, and, you know, they did love each other, but, uh, yeah, I don't think they really <laughs> worked anything out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they did come out with some sequels, and I think they tried to, you know... Did yes, they? they came out with two more. I have no idea what they're about. Why? But it's the name. It's the name. It's obviously the name. If anything, they just I didn't even to. think it was that popular when it came out, though. So this was, I mean, obviously... It, it was it, like 10 years ago. I don't know if either of them were found footage or anything like that, but I think they really just tried to cap, you know, captivate on the name and, and you know, found cash footage. grab. Yeah, it's whatever. But, um, <sighs> yeah, that was open water. Um, did you see Shark Night? So I didn't watch the whole thing. I was like, I have I went to, to the go. movies to see this. I have to go do things. I have to go sit in a room and just look at the wall. It was that bad. I just couldn't deal with it. That opening sequence was boo. It was so whack. Remind me what happened. Um, I mean, there's a girl and I think her boyfriend, they're in like a lake area. And, you know, oh she just, my God, yes. Yeah, okay, he, I remember. I don't know. It just, it wasn't suspenseful. It or... wasn't. Those two were idiots. And it. I mean, I don't even think, did he get eaten? I think he left. No, and so she, she that's got the eaten. thing. This is what's so insignificant about the opening scene. Like, the so the shark attacks the girl because the guy gets out. He goes to, I guess, this trailer or something that they were in. Yeah. The music's all loud, so you can't hear her scream. But she gets eaten. And that's it. They just yeah. move on. They don't even show the guy reacting. They, you know, that that's just it. Yeah. And I guess it was just a way to just point out, like, oh, here's the setting of what's going on. It was just no reason for it. It was stupid. Yeah. So it was just a poor execution, in my opinion, and I could only do so much. I, okay. And I, I watched it because, uh, what's her name? Catherine McPhee. Yeah, Catherine McPhee. And I can't think of his name. Uh, you're talking about uh, Walls or Squalls or Wall. Uh, yes. Yes. I think so. I know who you're talking about. He, I have to look up his name, but I know who you're talking about. From He's Once Upon a Time. He's hot. Yes. Um, I was like, Lance? I was like, no, he was Lance a lot he on Once Upon like, a yes, Time. But yes. yeah, so I watched it for them. And it's like he got his arm bitten off and then his girlfriend gets eaten. And it was just... <sighs> so this is what I found to be really funny in this one. And let me know if you remember this. So he gets his arm bitten off mm -hmm. and he's out of it. And then in the meantime, his girlfriend dies, right? Yeah. So he wakes up and, you know, they tell him that his, you know, girlfriend dies or whatever. And he was going to propose to her and all this stuff. So them two were like on point. Um, he is so enraged. He doesn't even care. And I think a part of him are, kind of wanted to die too. But he was just like, you take one of mine, I take one of yours. Like he's from the hood or something. I don't know. But like... He is like, I'm going to go out there and kill this shark because he ate my girlfriend. So with one arm, he thinks he can take on a shark. And he goes to the lake and he's standing there. He's ready to come out. He had an actual spear in his hand 
to take out this shark. And I was like, really? Out of all the weapons that he could arm himself with, they give him an actual spear. Wow. And I was like... We just really took it back? They really took it back. And it wasn't like an electronic harpoon or something to like shoot him with. It was a legitimate <sighs> spear. And I was like, really? Okay, I don't know. I, I didn't watch that far. Did he... Did he kill the shark? Get this. He killed the shark. But it wasn't the same shark. It was like some smaller hammerhead shark that was in there. Because oh. there's more than one shark right. in the movie. Yeah. So it wasn't the actual one that actually got him. But he actually lived through this ordeal. But he ended up dying later. Yeah. Because what he was waste. losing blood. Like he Yeah. Oh, he was, so he like died from yeah, blood he, loss. He, you know, um, he lost a lot of energy and a lot of blood throughout mm. this whole excursion of trying to take this shark out. I was actually pretty surprised they let him live through that. But they couldn't wait any longer. They had to take him somewhere, and they were so far from civilization. Yeah. And the only way to get to anywhere was through water. They couldn't just drive there. Yeah. So one of them tried to that. take a jet ski and tried to ride with him on the back and have him just lay there, and the other one was just going to drive. Um, a la uh, Cabin in the Woods style, uh, trying to you know use the motorbike like to like jump a cliff. This is no seriously. They tried their hardest, but it didn't work. He was losing so much blood, like he could barely keep his head up. It wasn't like he had on a seatbelt or anything. He just literally fell, fell overboard. Oh. And the guy you know who was driving him, he tried to go back for him, but I mean he had one arm. What was he gonna do? So he ended up like drowning and also being eaten. But it sucks. But this, I mean, Shark Night 3D, obviously, if I look it up, I think this was when 3D was just starting to yeah, come out. It was just a big cash in on yeah, 3D. They and they didn't to, even do a good job. Yeah, they tried to, you know, take any kind of scenario and make a 3D thing about yeah. it. And they did have a lot of sharks kind of come at the screen. I totally get that. Yeah. But, I mean, I yeah. mean this was just an excuse to, you know, kind of tie in on that. Um, it was a movie obviously filled with a bunch of beautiful people and even like the lead guy he was like he was a, he was the smallest guy but he was still pretty buff but yet they tried to make him all geek like and shy and I don't want to talk to this girl and blah 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 I'm so scared and they gave him a pair of glasses I'm like no no that doesn't count this is not geek representation you ain't shit you're still a buff <laughs> little white boy that still goes to the gym like kiss my ass I was like this is stupid Geeks can be hot, too. But here's the thing. This is um, what I actually give points for. So even though the whole movie's total farce, right? <laughs> the reasoning behind this, because Casper Van Dien was in it. It was him and his crew who were sort of like on the sidelines giving them all shit. I mean, they were super racist um, throughout this whole movie. And, you know, just hating on the city folk who, like, come here and want to just, you know, party at the cabin or whatever. The reason why there were sharks in a lake to begin with is because they put them there. Yeah, I remember that. And, but do you know why? No. So basically, the whole reason why all of this went down is because they were filming them being killed and sort of a snuff film sort of scenario. Oh. And they were going to sell these videos because of Shark Week. That's ridiculous. I think that's actually no, pretty it's, clever. It's a, it's a, it's a clever enough, but you know, it's like execution. Well, so the thing is, is that when you have a movie where you know humans are obviously more the villain than the actual sharks. I mean, sharks will just do what they do. Yeah. But it's because of the human aspect, the people who actually did this. I mean, they they were killers. I mean, it's just like the movie yeah. Vacancy. You know, they were filming mm -hmm. people dying and they were selling these videos. And they mentioned, like, people watch Shark Week, everyone's into the whole, you know, people dying and sharks it's attacking crazy. or whatever. And obviously, they can't show you the good shit because it's on national TV. So, obviously, they tried to, you know, cash in on that sort of, like, you know, hype yeah. and make videos to sell out. That's, and, uh, that's clever. That's so, clever. I actually like that idea. I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, the movie in itself was just obviously kind of stupid, and no, it everybody wasn't, died for dumb reasons. It wasn't and scary. Yeah. yeah. So that was Shark Week. I don't know. I'm Shark Night. I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but um, <laughs> if you if you need a good laugh, this one's actually pretty fun to just look at for 90 minutes. Or you can just stare at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so I'm gonna bring this up really quick and just just um, mention this really quick before we get to the next movie. Um, Forty Seven Meters Down. Mm. So this is the latest shark movie that came out. It stars Mandy Moore, mm. and um, this was horrible. Really, this movie was so bad. Oh, that's too bad. I did not like it at all. The reason for them even being out there is ridiculous. Like I wanted to slap these two in the face. So it's two. <laughs> it's two women. Um, they're sisters, and they go out on vacation and just kind of do their own thing. But Mandy Moore's character is dealing with a breakup. And she told her sister, like, we should go on vacation. We haven't been out in a while and blah, blah, blah. Let's go out and do this and have some fun. What she didn't tell her is that the reason why this vacation idea even happened is because her boyfriend broke up with her because she he thinks that she's boring. She doesn't have fun. She doesn't do anything exciting. Oh. She's not spontaneous. She's okay. always by the book. And so she thought that she can go out here and do this whole vacation thing on a whim and go back to her ex-boyfriend and be like, I'm fun. Don't you want me back? And so I just thought that was ridiculous for a man. Like, no, I don't think so. But the opportunity to do this sort of like shark cage sort of dive thing where they put you in a cage and lower you down and have you look at sharks... Her sister wanted to do it. Mandy Moore, she was just like, nope, I'm not doing it. I don't want to, you know, this sounds dangerous. It sounds illegal. Like, it's not even (laughs) like a touristy thing. It's just something that people make money off of. But she did it anyway, again, to impress this guy who is no guarantee to win back. And so they do it. You get to the boat. And this boat is raggedy. The equipment is raggedy. The people are shady and just a little... It, it just... just It's not a good scenario Movie at all. over. But... <laughs> Girl, let's just go get some pina coladas. Thank it's fine. you. But they do it anyway. And obviously they get lowered down because the chain breaks and they have yeah. to figure out their way to get out. I won't spoil the movie, but it's just a whole bunch of like cheap jump scares mm. and you know these two sisters you know just sort of like at you know airing out their you know sibling rivalry and and just all it's just so dumb it's just dumb and then there's only the two of them so what can you possibly do for scares because you're either going to kill them both or kill one of them or kill one of them but at the same time it's like how long is it going to take to do that so it's just like all of these false mm-hmm. scares where you know nothing's going to happen because they can't kill everybody right away and um, the ending was predictable. It just it just was not a good movie. So mm. I'm sorry. This was a miss for me. That's too bad. Yeah. So no, I like Mandy Moore as an actress. I think so do I. She's I really think she's good. great. So I was looking forward to seeing it. You know, I was like, oh, shark movie. Sharks are scary. I'll go watch it. But maybe I'll just wait for Netflix. So uh, let's see. Is there any other shark movies you can think of that you liked or remember? Two-headed shark attack? <laughs> I didn't like that. I'm kidding. Okay. I didn't even see it. I haven't seen any of the Sharknados no. or any of the no. sci-fi stuff. Like, I live through commercials, or if there is a show or a movie coming on after that, the channel will be on, and I'll watch the ending. But again, never touched them. It just hasn't been my thing. Nah. Can't do it. I uh, I only have so much life in me, so, you know... <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. Here's the thing about the Sharknado movies, though. They're having fun. Oh, they are, and they're very, very aware of what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, this is they they are self aware, and um, movies like that can be a, a, a you mm-hmm. know a joy. It's just the acting. The acting is what sucks, and I also hate the fact that they take my childhood actors that I grew up with and make them into these like B acting sort of. You know, like they're like, not only are you not worthy enough to be in like a theatrical movie, but you are put into a movie that is obviously just made to make fun of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you aren't acting at all either. Like some of these guys, like we, like Edward Furlong, he was in, I think the fourth one that just came out. And I, I was just like, Eddie, 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 come on. Like you're better than this. Well, 
He's had a rough run since childhood. He I mean, has. He, he has. You know, got into some things. So his career hasn't gone the way that we all thought it would. So I, you know, I think he's just doing whatever because he's he's trying to he's trying to bounce back. But. I would just hope that a director or a writer is not allowing you to not work at your full potential. Yes, it's a spoof. But if I'm going to be in a spoof movie, movie I'm going to act the shit out of it and yeah. be the best actor in this still... spoof movie. You should still give 100%. Mm-hmm. And some of these performances, like, I can actually sit through a fun movie like that if the acting was better. Yeah. But it's just, it, to me, it just seemed like they didn't care. So why should I? That's... I think that's, yeah, that's probably a good assessment. It, it does look funny, like, I don't know if it was part two or three, where you look at this poster and it's like, there are 50 people in this movie. <laughs> Vivica Fox is in this movie, yeah. which she just works. And they have some man. really cool people in it, too. Yeah, they're not as popular, mm-hmm. but they're still actors, and they're still people yeah. we know, and yeah. I'm but, happy that um, Ian Ziering is, you know, still working and doing his thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I haven't watched any of those yet. So if you guys have seen any of these Sharknado's movies, please fill us in. I want to know if these movies are actually worth watching. Even for the fun, sheer, you know, the sheer fun of it, let us know if these are any good to watch. Uh, I think you just, you really have to just be in the mood to have fun. Just have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. And so the granddaddy of them all, Jaws. dun 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 <laughs> I mean, it was scary as fuck when I was a kid. Um, I saw it, I think the first time I saw it, I was nine. And I was at the beach watching it. Not a great combo. Yeah. But yeah, it was scary enough. And uh, I think the way the shark films are made now, you see the sharks. Yes. You pretty much see them within the first five minutes of the movie. And Jaws did not do that and i think that is where jaws does stand out besides it being the first pretty much i think the first they might have had some other shark movies before that but this Mm -hmm. was the first big blockbuster it was surprised everyone and you didn't see that shark until pretty much the end so that actually raises a question for me so my thing is this the the biggest attraction i mean the the topic that kind of flows this movie on from beginning to end is the fact that there are shark attacks happening at this specific popular beach. Mm -hmm. Would you consider Jaws a shark movie, though? You don't see the shark till the end, but a lot of the movie is about the town and the people who are involved in this conspiracy of hiding certain information, putting people in danger, just the sort of economic of it all. And then there just happens to be yeah. a shark attacking people. That's a very interesting point that you bring up. To, mm-hmm. It's like more so it's the people's fault. Yeah. But don't you consider Alien to be a movie about Alien? Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, and then there were attacks throughout the movie. I'm not, But you I'm don't not, really see it a lot. I'm not denying that this is not a shark movie. I'm mm. only just kind of playing devil's advocate. I mean, no, I just that's, very, like, that's a very good point. I mean, it just... It, it brings up the real life predicament that we find ourselves in when people are more concerned about making money than protecting Mm -hmm. other people. You know, they want to line their pockets. So even though, yes, they found this girl washed up and her body has been mutilated, it's like "Mm, something ate her. Looks like a shark. Um, You know, they're like, oh, well, shark attacks don't usually happen here. Brush it off. We just got to like keep it pushing. It's fine. That is terrible. Yeah. That they, I mean, you want to say they, and I think, yes, it's they. The sheriff, I guess he felt like his hands were tied. He was just following orders, but, you know, they put people in danger and a bunch of other people got eaten. Well, two other people. So, um, uh, Twitter, um, I got some good responses. Um, obviously, there's consistency. Like, everybody loves Jaws, um, people who grew up with it. They will always say that this is the best shark movie or just one of the classics in general that um, should be watched, especially around this time of year. Um, I just want to read some of these uh, comments that we got on our Twitter page. So Teddy um, Paschetti, he says, um, it's a movie with three acts that is also two movies with three acts each. 
And I think that this comes in with my question about how there's the shark stuff and mm-hmm. then there's this political economic stuff. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's what he means. Um, and it does that perfectly is what he says. Mm-hmm. Um, another is um, at J68, he says, um, I will never tire of this movie. Fact. <laughs> um, let's see. Jaws Nut. <laughs> that's that's the name um at the jaws nut what's not to like great plot acting and effects best score ever and the birth of a legendary filmmaker mm-hmm. um by far um my favorite movie ever so yeah the score is actually pretty good too i mean it created yeah. like a very iconic song that is used in all mm-hmm. different types yeah. Yeah, um, it's probably my favorite shark movie really i think so okay. um but it has the worst sequels. <laughs> Part two is okay. It's fine. But it's basically just the same movie. Yeah. Um, I, I think a bunch of teens was on a boat or whatever. And they had like to like... Several boats just like... Oh, that's stranded. right. There was like one or two All of the them they had to All the boats are turned like, over. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's fine. It's okay. But... And, the, and you know, Roy Schneider, he comes and he saves his kids again. But it's like, really? Really? This family has that bad of luck? Because it's the same family in every movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, how does this happen? <laughs> so it's like the third I movie, like move. Well, they go to a town that doesn't. need... In the third like, movie, they weren't in the same town. Really? Yeah, they were at the water park. I think I told you. Yeah, they were working at the water park. Yes, I remember and you saying that. It's just like, why? Oh yeah, and that terrible, terrible 3D. Another 3D again, another shark one. Movie. Yeah, see, there you it go. Was really bad. Really, it was so bad. That's funny. It's like, what <laughs> is that? You can tell. The other thing is that. Do we still want to see shark movies that have this sort of suspenseful sort of, um, I guess, interpretation of a shark attack? Or do we really need to see the sharks like the person deep being style? tearing people apart? Yeah. And I guess it just depends on your taste. I think I definitely prefer less is more. Not for every movie and every yeah, genre, but-, but for sharks... It is effective. Going back to the beginning of what I said, the ocean is terrifying. You cannot see underneath the water. The shark could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you suddenly are just snatched underwater, it's like that person's gone. That's scary. Yeah. It's scary enough. And yeah, it's like you see the actual shark and it's sharp teeth. It's scary. But that movie did it for me. So I think, yeah, that's why I liked The Shallows. You see the shark. You do see it, but you don't see it that much. Yeah. Um you see like the aftermath of what it does to her and you see it eating other people, them getting snatched underwater. Mm-hmm. That scares me. So on that note, I just want to bring up um, some movie news that I read about this week. Um, I read this from denofgeek.com. They said that there is a sequel being filmed right now of Deep Blue Sea. Yes. This will not be a theatrical release, though. So uh. <laughs> what happens, they, so they said that um, there have been talk of a straight-to-DVD sequel being prepared uh, for the movie as part of a uh, Warner premiere series seven or eight years ago, but that never came to fruition. So the idea of a follow-up was presumed dead. But now an official sequel to Deep Blue Sea is being reported to be filming already, and... Um, and this time, it's sci-fi that picked it up. So it will air on sci-fi. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly on the story because um, clearly it's not going to involve anybody from the first one. I highly doubt anybody would even make a cameo just for the sheer fun of it. Mm, there's but, only um, a couple of survivors. I know, right? So. And so it's shooting in South Africa right now. And <laughs> uh, Darren Scott, who directed Dark House, um, I don't know that movie, but Mm-mm. yeah, that's something and then no casting details or anything like that and um i don't know yeah i i don't know if it's gonna be as like crazy wacky as sharknado maybe they'll try and take it seriously i don't know if it'll be in the same sort of like scenarios deep blue sea because i i don't see a reason to put a part two next to it unless they're in the same situation which is an underground unless there was an extra shark and it escape yeah. or something like that so i i don't know I, if they're going to connect it but yes there is going to be a sequel hmm. so i probably won't see it <laughs> well it's on sci-fi i mean i i really i don't know if i would want to pay for a movie like that either so i mean i'll watch it on sci-fi do you um 
have a bitch really. I do have a bitch really. Let's hear it. Um, so this bitch really is actually from the shallows. <laughs> so our character is, is stranded on a rock too far from land. She can't swim there by herself, especially with a leg that's been bitten into the blood everywhere. It's just going to mm-hmm. attract it. Yada, yada, yada. She realizes that she has a um, phone in her bag and she notices a human being on the beach. And I think this is towards the evening. She yeah. kind of passed or early, out. Early, morning. Yeah, she kind of passed out, woke up, noticed that there's somebody on the beach. So the camera goes to the actual person on the beach. The person, um, we're told, is drunk as shit or has a hangover because the first thing you see is this big bo- bottle of alcohol. And um, he gets up. I don't think he speaks English, but she's trying to, you know, contact him and and say, hey, I'm over here. Help me. So he notices her and she's gesturing that I have a bag and has a phone. Call the police. Call somebody to come help me. So he's looking around. He's stumbling and he doesn't know where he is, what's going on. But he does notice that she's pointing at something. So he goes over and he grabs her bag and you think okay he's too drunk to really do anything but he's going through her stuff and then he starts stealing shit yeah he starts taking her stuff and looking through it and took her phone and put it in his pocket i I think he tried to open it it didn't work i don't know what was going on but then he puts the backpack on and starts walking this is her only sign of help anybody who's anybody who's been around this whole time and time's running out for her so she's devastated but this asshole just decides to steal her stuff and doesn't help her out then he notices her surfboard in the water now i understand if you want to loot somebody's stuff and you see some valuable things in there i don't know what you want to do with a surfboard but he felt compelled to get it and it was close enough to shore for him to get into the water and grab it but i'm thinking in my mind what do you need a surfboard for right so he goes into the water he grabs a surfboard and i think they tried to play on this fact that he was drunk or whatever he you know he wasn't drunk enough to like steal a bag but he was drunk enough to get on a surfboard but she's trying to warn him it's a shark get out of the water so he's on this surfboard and he's all like imitating trying to like swim or whatever and then obviously the fucker gets eaten yeah. and bit and you know the surfboard cracks in half and his body is like torn in half and he's like climbing on the beach with half his body gone and then he eventually just dies. Bitch, really? Did you need a surfboard? First of all, how much money do you really think surfboards are going for in Mexico? I don't know. To think that you were going to benefit from stealing this thing. Plus, you were drunk as shit. Don't get in the water. You can't even barely stand on your own two feet. Let alone, I mean, he was stumbling. Yeah. But for some reason felt he needed this surfboard. Talk about greedy. Bitch, really. Like, I don't wish death upon somebody, but damn it, you got what you deserved. It but is. the other thing was, it was kind of like a very cheap way to add more suspense to the thing. I mean, I get it. Like I said, I didn't go because I thought she was going to be the only one, so there weren't going to be as much action. But I didn't think this was a really good reason to bring a death along. I just, it was just kind of like, eh, yeah. we got to see some blood and guts for five minutes. I think I would have preferred him to just walk off. Exactly. Because that would have been devastating. That would have like, been, dis- <gasps> yeah. He took her shit. He took her phone. He's not going to help her. He's exactly. just, um, yeah. So... So yeah, kind of really. I kind of felt better that he got eaten. Yeah. Well, um, I think we've talked extensively about <laughs> sharks enough. Yeah. Um, next week. Yes. Yes. Is August. August. Yes. So we decided to um, do a theme for our next um, handful of episodes for the month of August. Why don't you describe what we're doing next month? Just to give them a little preview. Mm-hmm. So we decided that in honor of the great, late Wes Craven, we will be doing an episode each week to basically just show our love for him and the films that he's done. You know, maybe some of them aren't so great, but most of them I think are pretty great. So that's what we will be doing. We will be... um, 
talking about the man himself, and we'll be focusing on a couple of our favorite series. <laughs> I'm sure you can guess one of them. And um, yeah, that's what you have to look forward to for the entire month of August. Yes, yes. I'm very, very excited for this. Um, Nate and I decided to give Russ Craven the full month, so it's officially West Craven Month. Um, we're still going to be doing our monthly segment starting next week, so we will be battling it out on uh, some West Craven movies and see which one ends up in our Hall of Fears and our Damn. DVD barrel. And uh, yeah, this will be really exciting because Wes Craven's a genius and he makes good stuff. So yeah, uh, I have a feeling this will be. Uh, I'm gonna a have fun to episode. watch some things that I haven't seen. Yeah, there is some some homework that I'm gonna have to do too. I, I know that there are some who are that are not great. Yeah, so you yeah. have to watch those. <laughs> but um, no, we're really excited about this. So yeah, for the month of August, it's all going to be about Wes Craven. Trust me, we have plenty that we're going to be talking about. So any Wes Craven fans out there, if you know of any, let them know this is the time to start listening to our podcast because it's going to be Wes Craven the whole time. Um, also note that we've been coming out with episodes on Mondays. And um, just due to scheduling conflicts in the way that we want to format our Wes Craven Month, we're going to be putting out um, episodes from now on on Wednesdays. So just look out for our episodes on Wednesdays, and we'll definitely remind everyone um, leading up to those days. Look out for posts um, on uh, rating movies of his, and we would love to hear your opinions about his uh, films. And um, we will uh, see you next week. Oh, bitch, I ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs>